Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, you got really good answers. That's awesome. I should do that degree. <laughs> was it you or me next? I think it's me. Okay. okay, we can do it in one go. So I'll, should I start it? I'll do it again. You tell me when to start. Hi, I'm Ruth. I'm from the School of Mechanical and Mining Engineering, where I'm an, a lecturer, and I'm also the academic advisor for the Chemical and Materials Program. And this is Jordan, and he is a third year student in the Chemical and Materials Program. And we're here to answer some of your questions. So just the first question then, so why did you choose to study at the University of Queensland? Well, growing up in um, Brisbane, I'd always just wanted to go to um, UQ, so my mum went here. She'd always tell me the stories about uni in her day, and it really made me want to go to UQ. Did she um, study engineering? No, no, she actually oh. did pharmacy. Okay. So this was back when pharmacy was at the um, St. Lucia campus. Now oh, it's okay. in Woolloongabba, I think. Um, so, and also just growing up in Brisbane, I'd always known the reputation of Queensland Uni as the best university in Queensland. So I'd always just had my eyes set on here. Okay, great. Question for you, what is chemical and materials engineering? So chemical and materials engineering um, is both chemical and materials engineering. And so what we look at is often we look at um, you know, processes. So you would look at, for example, a chemical process such as processing a polymer, and that, that requires both chemical understanding and then materials understanding for what kind of properties do you want from your polymer. Um, the other kind of systems that we look at, which is something that I work on, is looking at battery systems. So battery systems requires both materials understanding, but then also the chemical understanding as well. So bringing those two fields together to understand, you know, how can you make maybe a better material to improve the process that you're trying to to perform. So why did you choose to study, study this degree? So I was actually, I, I think in high school I changed my QTAC preferences four times or something. So I, I was quite uncertain going in into the, into the degree what I really wanted to do. I think once I finally got to UQ and started doing engineering, I realized that it's, it's, what, it's what I want to do. It's really for me because you, I think the, what really sums it up for me is the impact you can have as an engineer on people and on society so and even if you're say you're working for a mining company you can reduce their carbon dioxide emissions by thousands of tons per year just by changing a few simple calculations so you can apply the knowledge the really theoretical knowledge that you've learned and put it into practice to really make a big difference on a lot of people's lives. That's great. And and then why the chemical and materials, the so, specialisation in that area? So I actually, when I was doing, um, see my first year I was quite uncertain and I did a broad range of subjects and so I did um, enough to keep all my options open for second year pretty much. By the end of second year I was quite um, undecided between chemical and mechanical engineering mm -hmm. and I found that the materials major actually allows you to um, get a lot of, I guess, you can study to be a chemical engineer, but also learn to think like a mechanical engineer. Yep. So you're not just, because in chemical engineering, you learn a very defined way of thinking, and it's, it's a very important way of thinking, but I think it's really important to get the perspective of other types of engineering so that you can apply that in the chemical engineering field. So I really like the, I guess, the duality of being able to think of big processes and big systems, but then think of the specifics like the mechanical properties, like a mechanical engineer. And you're enjoying it then? And, um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> okay. it's stressful, but I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Especially in week 13. Especially in week, <laughs> in week 13. Yeah, 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 definitely. All right, so my next question is, so what do you love about your degree? Well, so I think I really like the impact that you can have on, on other people as an engineer, but also the way that chemical engineering teaches you to think. So the way that it teaches you to consider a huge problem as just one system and break it down into small systems which allow you to, I guess, as one person, actually get your head around all of these inputs and outputs going in and out of the system and allows you to, I guess, solve it and have an impact on it just as one person. Mm -hmm. So it really simplifies really daunting big tasks down to things that we can process individually. So the next one here, what does the future of this industry look like? Uh, I think. Look, I think it's constantly changing. So 
I think we've already touched on a couple of areas that I think that are growing. So one is in polymer engineering. I think this is a really, really big growing space. Um, also with the, you know, the issues associated with recyclability, then, mm. then there's also these issues with the, with the polymer engineering. I also feel in the composites, there's a lot of room to grow in the, the composites area as well. And that really draws on the strength that you have from, as a chemical engineer and a materials engineer. And then more in these alternative tech, um, energy technologies, like the battery systems or production of hydrogen, and I've also worked on fuel cell systems. These are actually also really drawing multiple aspects of the degree together into one field. So I would say that these are the growing areas in, in chemical and materials engineering. Do you have advice to high school students who are interested in this particular area? That's a bit of a hard one, but I would say to really, to determine, so if you're, to determine if you're interested in the degree, to really look at um, the courses that the degree has to offer that's on the course lists and look at the research projects that's available at the university and explore all the opportunities that are available to you because you can get through this degree just doing the coursework and doing the um, completing all the assignments. But if you really take the initiative to go out and do some research projects and engage with lecturers and tutors and PhD students, then you'll really get the full benefit out of this degree rather than just passing and coming out with a certificate at the end.